I've set up here to uh, to put a texture and a displacement map on these tires. I want to address the uh, the treads here, and there are a couple of things that I've done to set up that I wanted to share with you first. Uh, first of all, I've I've done a little bit of um, of layering here. I have my tires set up on a separate layer. I have my wheels set up on a separate layer, and then of course the rest of the cars. You know, is, is divided up onto these different layers, but I think it's a lot easier to deal with just uh, just the piece that we're uh, uh, we're dealing with. Of course, if I select one of these tires and hit the F key, as in Frank, uh, that will be centered in my um, in my tumble view, which is going to make things a lot easier. Uh, I'm, in looking at this, the the geometry here is basically a torus. It's a little more dense than I like to use, but uh, um, I'll go ahead and and, uh, and 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 keep that. Um, one of the things that that is um, is a particular note is that I I didn't build these tires, uh, so that's why they're they're more dense than I would like. And I also have um, you know in the texture uh, the texture editor, you can see that the UVs have been laid out in, in a particular way that that I I really don't want to use. Um, I have, you know, this this uh, sidewall here uh, incorporates um, both sidewalls. It's a projection there, and then the uh, this area right here, this flat area, uh, is the overlapping uh, top and bottom of or inside and outside of this tire. So that's something that I'm going to want to address. I'm going to actually rebuild this whole tire uh, to make it a little easier to texture. Uh, before I do that, I want to take a look at the texture that I'm going to use, which I have open here in Photoshop, and I just want to make sure that there are no problems with it before I start to apply it. Um, this right now is a kind of a square um, chunk of the texture. When I look at it from left to right, um, I know that this texture is going to be mapped uh, roughly from you know this sidewall here over to the sidewall uh, on the other side. Uh, vertically, it's going to repeat. So the bottom edge here is going to match up to the top edge here. And I want to make sure that those transitions are all uh, seamless so that I don't get hard lines on my texture. In order to do that, um, I want to use the offset filter on uh, in Photoshop here. And so I'll go to my filter here under Other, and I'll click on Offset. And here I can I can offset this horizontally by a certain number of pixels and then uh, vertically by a certain number of pixels. So I'll, um, I'll take the horizontal offset and I'll change it to 100 pixels to the right. And you can see right here where the two edges line up. They don't line up exactly right. Um, there's, a, uh, there's a line in between them. So there's a couple ways that I could deal with that. Uh, the way that I'm going to deal with it is to select uh, the area around that line there. It's just a very narrow strip, and I'll just fill that in with white. Uh, so, you know, I've got my brush tool right here, so I'll just go ahead and paint over it. Um, and so that just means that, uh, you know, that when, um, um, when this, um, you know, when the two edges come together, I'm not going to have any kind of a seam there. So I'll go back into my offset filter, and uh, I'll shift that back. And um, now I want to take a look at this vertical, um, uh, this vertical orientation. So when I raise this up, you can see that where the bottom meets the top, um, it gives me a line. So they don't meet exactly. So the way that I'm going to deal with this is to actually um, cut and paste. I'll select a piece of this. And it doesn't really matter which piece I, you know, I pick, because I'm just going to overlay it on top. So I'll copy that with Control C, and I'll paste it with Control V, and then I'll just move it down so that it covers. And I'll just find the place where this covers perfectly, where I have no seamless, uh, um, you know, seamless transition. And now I've got this thing fixed. So I'll uh, I'll flatten this image out. You know you can see that you know when I copied and pasted I got another uh, another layer on top of there. So I'll just go ahead and uh, flatten the image, and I'll save it again. Uh, and I'll just save this with a new with a new name. I'll just call this tread, and I'll save it as a JPEG. And uh, 
I like to use no compression on a JPEG and make sure that my formatting is a baseline standard and that's all I need. So now I'm ready to go. Um, with this tire, uh, when I have the, the wheels selected here, you can see that I'm never going to see the inside of that tire. And in fact, the construction of a, of a car tire uh, is such that it clinches along this along this uh, this wheel edge. So I I don't need this inside portion. And that by deleting it, it's going to really make things a lot uh, a lot easier for me to um, uh, to lay out the UVs on this tire and to uh, uh, and to um, to texture map it. So what I'm going to do is uh, a little bit of a non-standard practice. Um, I'm going to trace over one of these edges and save this tire as a NURBS object. When you have a polygonal object like this, um, you have to lay out the UVs and you have to match your texture up um, to the layout that you've chosen. Uh, on a NURBS object, the UVs are automatically laid out for you. And in the case of a tire like this, um, I think it's a little bit easier to um, um, to put this this kind of a tread on if it's if, if the UVs are laid out the way a NURBS uh, object would would lay out the UVs. That kind of thing is entirely up to you. You you have to do what's most comfortable for you. Um, I just wanted to show you this method because I find it a little bit easier. So in order to, to set up this trace, um, I'll go into the side view and um, select this tire here. And I'm going to just go ahead and select uh, these faces that go, um, uh, you know, that, that, that cut a cross section of this tire. And I'll go ahead and just go to Mesh and I'll extract those faces. And I'll select the rest of the tire and delete it. So now I just have this one piece, uh, this one cross section of the tire. And what I want to do is use this um, as an object to trace with a NURBS curve, and then I'll revolve that NURBS curve. I'll get an, a duplicate um, tire. I will have rebuilt it in NURBS, and the, uh, the UVs will automatically be laid out for me. So uh, I'll select the, the tire here, or the little cross section here, and in my display tools, I'm going to go to uh, display my polygon vertices, and that's going to highlight all the vertices for me. Now I know that my clinch, uh, the clinch on this uh, on this wheel happens somewhere on the inside here, and uh, somewhere on the inside here. And my goal is to just make sure that uh, the section that I have is is uniform. So I'll create a CV curve, and in my CV curve tool, I want to make sure that my curve degree is uh, degree three or cubic, uh, which it should be by default. And then um, I want my knot spacing to be chord length. Um, I'll explain that in a minute, but the chord length uh, is a very even way of laying out your, um, uh, your curve for the purpose of texture mapping. Once I've done that, then I can actually just trace this exactly as it is by um, either pressing down the C, the uh, V key for vertex snap, or I can just click on the vertex snap um, icon up here. So I'll start somewhere in the middle of this clinch, and every one of my NURBS uh, vertices then is being snapped uh, to the correct polygon vertex. So I've started and ended, you know, pretty much in the same spot there. So uh, this curve is now um, nice and even. I've eliminated those uh, those faces there. So I can take this polygon object and delete it. And here's my NURBS curve. Um, as I said before, it is a um, it's a chord length knot spacing, um, which I think is very important. Once I've done that, then I need to um, center the pivot um, right in the middle of this uh, this wheel here. So I'll select the the, uh, the tire and I'll hit the I'll select this curve. I'll hit the W key so that I, I show my uh, my move um, uh, manipulator. I'll turn off the point snap 
you just come over here and I'll hit the insert key for um, pivot manipulation. I'll hold down the C key for my curve snap and I'll middle mouse click and drag right here and that's going to snap my pivot point right to the center of that wheel. I'll hit the insert key to get rid of it and now I can take this and revolve it. I'll go into my NURBS surfaces and I'll click on surfaces revolve and here I can choose which axis I want to revolve it around so um, I'll choose the x-axis um, I want to go from 0 to 360 which is going to give me a complete revolve around that x-axis and then I can choose how many segments I want and I'm gonna just choose uh, well let's just go with 64 we'll see how that looks so that gives me a tire that's rebuilt in NURBS and it looks uh, identical to the uh, the polygon tires that we've got except that the, the UVs are laid out uh, uh, much better. So I'm just going to clean up a little bit. I'll, I'll select this curve uh, that, that defined this surface and I'll delete it. You can see that I've got a um, you know a thicker edge right here and that's just a way of seeing you know where the beginning and the end of this uh, this surface is. When I select this you can see that the form in U is open which which is just an indication that you know that, that the um, you know the, this surface doesn't come around and close in on itself and the form V is periodic which means that it does it comes around and there really is no beginning and no end. So to go ahead and texture map this, I know that I ultimately want to have um, that that tire um, applied as a displacement map or a bump map, but just to make my life a little easier, I'm going to apply it as a color map first, just on a uh, um, just on a surface shader. This way, I can uh, I can manipulate it and place it the way that I like. So um, uh, let's open up the uh, the hypershade window here. I'll create a surface shader and I'll apply that surface shader to my uh, to my tire and then I'll take a 2D um, file texture here and I'll apply that as the color which on a surface shader is the default uh, is the default connection uh, the file then I'll load up my um, uh, my tire which is my repaired uh, tread, and let's just do a quick uh, a quick render here, and you can see that the uh, you know that it, it's covering the entire uh, surface of my tire, and it's stretching out uh, and elongating uh, substantially uh, to uh, to to be able to wrap around the perimeter here. So I guess the first thing that I'll do is in the V. Uh, repeat. I'm going to repeat that maybe, uh, let's try 10, 10 times. Okay, so now you can see where the tread uh, is repeated 10 times. So I, I kind of like that, but what I want to do is position this so that it, uh, uh, it doesn't cover these side walls. So if we consider that the, the, um, the first vertex on this tire is over here on the left, and then it works its way around the top and then ends up over here in the last vertex is on the right. That's where this texture will begin and end. So what I'll do is I'm going to just start guessing a little bit here. I'm going to take my coverage and make that 0.5. All right, so now my, my, my texture map covers only half of my tire. Let's just do a quick render and see what that looks like. Okay, so the tread is actually looking uh, pretty good, but it's shifted over, um, you know, to the to the left a little bit. So since I'm only covering half of the tire, I want the other half to be blank, um, and so I'm going to translate my frame 25% uh, uh, of the way. So 
So by translating it 25%, that means that 25% of the tire is empty, then 50% of the tire is uh, covered by this texture, and then the other 25% is, uh, is empty again. So that's a good way of doing this. I, I think that if you think of your coverage as uh, um, you know, going from 0 to 1, if you're only covering half the amount, then the translation should be the other half divided by 2 if you, want to, if you want it to be centered. So what I want to do here is just come in a little bit closer and take a look and you can see that, that um, my tire treads are sort of wrapping around uh, the sidewall just a little bit. I want that to be a little bit more. So maybe I'll make this uh, coverage 0.6. And then my translation uh, would be 0.2. This way I'll have 0.2 at the beginning, 0.6 going across, and then 0.2 for a total of, of, uh, of 1. So now I've got a really strong wrap uh, going around here. And that's kind of what I want, and you'll see why in a minute. All right, so now that I've got this um, this set up the way that I like it, um, what I want to do is I'm going to be using this um, this tread as a uh, as a displacement map, and I know that where the tread is white, I'm going to get maximum displacement. Where the tread is black, I'm going to get minimum displacement. So what I really want to do is have a like a gradual transition from um, black to white. Um, covering these two edges. So in order to do that, I'm going to take a ramp. Uh, I know that I want this to be uh, vertical, so I'll take the ramp and I'll make it a uh, U-ramp. And I'm going to, um, uh, I'll apply this as the uh, color gain of my tire. Now you can see that it's only covering uh, where the uh, where the treads are because I've got uh, uh, you know the rest would be the default color, but that's enough. So um, I'll um, I'll start off with black. So I want the uh, the blue area there to be black, and I want the uh, red area to be black. And then I'm going to duplicate this green. And what I'm looking for is a white swatch following where this tire tread is, uh, but transitioning to that um, to that white swatch um, right on the edge there. So let's just make this green white here, and we can start um, we can start working. So I'll pull my my black all the way up. You can see that this is the um, this is the right side here. And if I go too far, you can see my color gain just really um, overrides this whole um, this whole tire tread. So my goal here is to um, is to narrow down this area of the ramp um, so that I just get a very quick transition, but it still fades in uh, pretty. Um, pretty nicely. And then on the other side I'll do the same thing. Let's just do the extreme first. I'll come over here until I see the black and then I'll just start backing it off um, a little bit and a little bit. So that now I don't have those hard white lines, I have this gradual transition from, uh, from black to white on the, um, uh, on, the, uh, on the tire tread. So uh, if I do a render here, you can see that, that my treads then begin um, right here. Now this is just applied as a color map. We need to think about this in terms of it being a displacement map. So let me just do an IPR render here and see if I can fine tune this a little bit more. I know that the left side here, well actually I don't know anything about the left side. Let's change this. Yeah, so the left side is the bottom. So I'll try to bring this down a little bit more and, and really get uh, pretty fine-tuned with my ramp. Okay, so that's going to give me that nice gradual transition. So let's, uh, let's do the same thing on the other side. 
I'll just move this up. Till I get that nice that nice ramp transition. I think I want to cover that. Okay. I think that's pretty close to the way that I want this to be. So now that I have these things positioned correctly, you know, I've just used the color attribute of a surface shader in order to, uh, uh, to get that color to work properly. Uh, so now I'll take a, um, a blend material and I'll, I'll do this for real as the, um, um, as the displacement map. So I'll take my, my file texture and my blend and I'll show my inputs and outputs. Uh, here's the blend. I'll move this over here. And I'm going to take this file texture and apply it to the displacement material here. We can get rid of this. Oh, and I'll take the blend and I'll assign it to the tire. So now I can get rid of this surface shader. Let's just take the blend and show the inputs and outputs, and that'll lay out my um, uh, my um, it'll lay everything out for me the way that I want it. But you can see that my um, you can see that my I IPR is really starting to uh, to render this. You can see that the uh, that this is the, the displacement here is really huge. So I have a couple of different things that I need to do. First, I'm going to go ahead and just uh, um, get rid of that IPR render. I'll just do a straight render here. Uh, it takes a few minutes, so I don't want to keep uh, uh, keep doing a you know a full render. Um, while I'm let's just I'll stop that for now. So um, I, first thing I want to do is just take the reflectivity of this blend all the way down. Um, it is reflecting. I'm using mental ray and I'm using an IBL node in the background. And I certainly don't want that tire to look like chrome. Uh, the other thing that I want to do is in the um, the tire itself under my um, displacement map section um, I want to change my bounding box scale. So I'll let uh, Maya automatically calculate that for me. Uh, it takes a couple of minutes to do and uh, so now you can see that um, uh, you know my bounding box scale is substantially higher than the uh, the 1.5 default but that's going to make that uh, uh, that displacement map work a little bit uh, a little bit better. Uh, now for the um, uh, for the displacement I know that uh, my um, uh, my file texture here, the white is going to displace out and the, the black is going to not displace at all. And in fact, I think that what I want is to invert this. So I'll select this, uh, this file texture here and I'll, uh, I'll go into the effects section and I'll just invert that. And that, that's going to give me a little bit, uh, uh, you know, in other words, the tire is not going to exceed its own boundary. It's going to displace inward. Um, and now it's really kind of folding in on itself and creating this wild displacement. So um, what I'll do is um, take the scale of the displacement shader and I'll drop that way down. Let's drop that down to a 0.1. So that's a lot more reasonable, but it's still displaced pretty heavily. So let's try uh, going another 10%. So I'll go to 0.01. And so by d dropping that displacement scale down, you know, I can get a really nice, healthy-looking tread. Let's see if I can go down a little further, 0 0.005, and uh, we'll just get a little bit of a, you know, a little more subtle tread on there. That's looking pretty good the way that I like it. Uh, one thing to notice, though, is that, um, you know, I've got, I still have that pretty hard edge around here, and uh, that's where this is going to come in. Uh, right now, I have this ramp lined up with the edges just right, except that's uh, mapped to the color gain, and it's actually the alpha that is controlling the displacement. So what I'll do is I'll disconnect this, and um, I know that that uh, 
um, I want the um, I just need a scale or attribute here so there's a couple ways that I could do that uh, in this case I'll use a utility node and um, uh, I'll take the, um, the luminance and that changes my color here to a black and white so that takes three channels here and multiplies them down to a single scalar value so that's what I want I'll just uh, map that to the value there and then I'll take this and I will uh, I'll click on other and I want the out value to be uh, mapped to the alpha gain so now um, the alpha gain of or the you know the alpha of this tire tread around the edges is getting multiplied down to black so let's uh, let's actually save this render and we can uh, redo it and so what we've got then is notice how the, the displacement along this edge is very very prominent and down here it's faded in a little bit more and that's because the alpha gain just kind of lines up right up with that edge so that's um, that's pretty much it for um, uh, laying out the tire tread there and then of course the next thing that we can do is change the color of this blin uh, so we can make that you know black and it's got that nice shiny tread on it uh, so we'll get a nice slick uh, tire